hungry for Jesus Christ. Are you thirsty today? Because I don't want another religion in my life. I left religion. I left Islam. I hate it. I just want to be free. I just want to be free. And then something happens to that person. A touch or a breeze or in a form of a wind. I know it is Jesus. Maybe you are sitting here today and you are saying, I need that transformation because I don't want to be stuck in this place anymore. Now this is the biggest harvest time. This is the revival time for God to come and change everything. Hello, dear friends. Welcome to Embracing New Life. I am Ushuk Abla, and also all over the world, Dream Church. People are watching this broadcast right now from Afghanistan, Pakistan, Egypt, Iraq, Yemen, Syria, Iran, all over the world. You are welcome. Dream Church is God's dream. We, we are a big church. Listen to me carefully. That church exists in China. It exists in Egypt, all over the the world without walls. God doesn't see denominations. He doesn't see any barriers. He doesn't see colors, tribes. He sees his beautiful, beautiful creation. And he has a word for you today. He has a new destiny for you today. And he is going to remove your horse blinds. And he's going to get you out of your box. And he wants to do new things in your lives today. We are going to share things with you that are going to challenge you, your faith, your circumstance, because get ready. God is going to do something amazing in your life today. I have a special guest, very special guest. I met him a few months ago and my life has changed. I was challenged myself, and it was all for the benefit of the gospel, benefit of the kingdom work, because he started sharing things with me that he, God was using him mightily, mightily in all over the world. And when I meet people like that, you know, it's a kindred, kindred spirit. I start feeling this iron sharpens iron experience that it just takes you to next level of glory. And today we want to bring it to you, to your house or wherever you are for you to go to the next level. And I believe with all my heart, if you are sick today, you are going to get healed. If you need a miraculous breakthrough, you are going to get a miraculous breakthrough. Just believe. I speak right now in the name of Jesus Christ for you to have a childlike faith in Jesus' name. That God can do anything in your life just through this broadcast today. Just believe. So I want to welcome my dear friend and brother and minister, David Turner. Welcome. So good to have you here, David. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Yes. I've been hearing wonderful testimonies from you last night and way before about how David Turner International Ministries, God is using you, uh, all your team, and making a difference in the world. But would you please share with us the beginning, your testimony, very important to us. Absolutely. You know, because my testimony is one that hopefully will encourage everybody that God can use anyone. He can use a donkey. He uses <laughs> me. You know, sometimes people see you and they think, oh, that's that big faith evangelist. He's praying for miracles. I couldn't be like that. Mm -hmm. But I was an ordinary person. I didn't go through divinity school or theological schools. I was just an ordinary businessman, a kid growing up. I was born in a Jewish family and uh, my father left when I was one. Uh, we were very poor. My mother remarried. Uh, my stepfather, um, unfortunately, he was a pastor, but he was an alcoholic who literally uh, beat us and drank a six pack of beer on Saturday wow. and preached on Sundays. Mm -hmm. I thought it was such a curse, but God showed me, you know, Romans 8, 28, it says, God will use all things together for all good things, yes. when you love him. You say, how can that be used for good? Whoever thought I'd be a healing evangelist later in my life who hates phoniness and hypocrisy mm -hmm. because of what I saw when I was young. But that's a beautiful combination. I don't exaggerate anything. I tell the truth. I only want what's real. I don't Amen. overstate how many people or how many miracles. I always understate it. God doesn't bless exaggeration. Amen. So 
I learned that and because I was rejecting that phoniness and almost missed Jesus because of the people that were around my life. Because many times we want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. So mm, that's good. By the grace of God, um, I always wanted to be a business person, be successful. So I was on the straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, uh, I graduated high school early. I worked since I was nine years old. Yes. Um, I went to college early. I graduated college at 19 and started my first business. Wow. So I was an entrepreneur from 19 all the way till today for 30 something years. Wow. Um, but it was in my early 20s, by the grace of God, that I walked through the doors of a church. Within six months, I believed Jesus and, uh, and I considered myself a Christian. Mm -hmm. When I say considered, you know, there's a day we raise our hand and say, I believe Jesus and we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. But I believe there's more than that. Yes, God's grace is so sufficient that his grace, Ephesians 2, 8, it's freely given. And all we have to do, it says, if you call on my name, he says, Isaiah 58, verse 9, I'll say, lo, I'm here. Yes. So just we say Jesus and by his grace, we can be saved. But that's not all that's there. And that's the biggest part of the story. Absolutely. You see, I sat in church for 14 years. I gave an offering and a tithe. I, I helped with the children. I listened to messages. I sang mm -hmm. songs. And I thought that's what being a Christian was all about. Yes. But it was 14 years later that I experienced the first miracle of Jesus Christ in my life. And when it happened, I was so shocked because my first thought was, I don't even know that I was saved before wow. that. That's so big because yeah. experiencing Jesus is so different than knowing about Jesus, exactly. right? Exactly. So for 14 years, can we say you were a church going, maybe unbeliever? <laughs> exactly. And I feel it's like that. I feel half my ministry is preaching Jesus Christ to the Christians. Yes. Beca and it's, it's not condemning anybody. Sure. It, we don't know what we don't know. And mm -hmm. until you have someone that shows you more. And that's why my favorite thing about miracles it's not for people to get a miracle. It's for people to know the giver of the miracles. Amen. His name is Jesus. A absolutely. Because Psalm 34, 8, it says, taste and see the Lord is good. So good. When you get one taste of Jesus, it won't be like, oh, I believe this or I think that. Mm -hmm. Our own opinion doesn't even matter anymore. Mm -hmm. When people ask me what I think, I tell them, you don't need to know what I think. Let me tell you what God has to say. I love it. Amen. I love it. Yeah. So tell us about that experience that changed your life because a lot of people are watching right now and maybe they are going through a dry season yeah. and maybe they have seen maybe long time ago move of God in their lives, but now it is a ritual. Yeah. It is a routine and yeah. monotone and they lost their first love or they never experienced God's presence exactly. until, you know, maybe today they are going to experience it while they are listening to you. Amen. So tell us what happened to you? You know, first of all, I had two prayers in my heart and they were very simple. You don't have to be a, a theologian to understand the simple wisdom God gives me. Yes. Um, they were, Jesus, I want to know you better and I want all that you have for me. Okay. That's it. That's Those big. Two they, things. They are simple, but they simple. are powerful, right? Yes. These are arrow yes. prayers. Yes. So tell us again, I want to know you. I want to know you better and I want all that you have for me. Mm. I want to, you know, I used to want what I wanted in my life. Yes. But once I knew Jesus was there, I was like, Jesus, you designed me. You created me. You have a plan for me. I always tell people I learned this from the Lord. Yes. You need not discover anything about your life. All you have to do is uncover what Jesus has already said about you. Oh, beautiful. Amen. Amen. You see, he's the God who declares the mm. end from the beginning. Isaiah mm. 46, verse 10. Before you think today, does Jesus know me? He doesn't In only know you today, yes. but he knew you from the foundations of the world. When he died on that cross, he knew your name. He knew it was for you. That's why he said, but for the joy set before me. It wasn't joyful to be crucified. Right. It was joyful because he knew, child of God, mm -hmm. that today you were going to be saying, is Jesus there? Does he hear? Does he care? And he created that resurrection power that day, the yes. same spirit, Romans 8, 11, Romans 6, verse 4, that 
can raise Jesus is the same spirit that raises us from death to life. And it doesn't even have to be physical death. You may be dead today, dead to your sins, in your depression, in your tiredness, Hallelujah. dead to thinking I have no future, uh, God has forgotten me, people I don't matter, my career means nothing. But I tell you today, you are not dead in Jesus Christ. There is a resurrection power that will raise up your physical body, yes. will raise up your spirit, will raise up your heart today and behold, he is the God who makes all things new. I love it. I he love it. He can make you new today. So that day that you had a miraculous encounter with God, he, he, he raised you almost from the dead, right? You know, T tell us about it. You know, my faith for what I'd call it, even though I went to church for all intents and purposes mm -hmm. was dead. I, I would show up at church and like I say, do all these things. And it was just part of being that good person and doing sure. what I felt was right. But you know, several things happened, uh, trying to make that long story and condense it. But, um, but first of all, um, a pastor, I had those prayers and I was praying the prayer of Jabez. It, it's yes. actually in the Bible, first Chronicles four, verse nine and 10, mm -hmm. where Jabez, he's this man, he, and he prays, Oh God, expand my territory yes. and make me a blessing. Mm -hmm. And, and people would take that almost as like, people think it's like, uh, name it and claim it like a magic formula. Like I want a house in the name of Jesus. And when people would say in the name of Jesus, somehow God said, oh, they use the magic word. I have to do it. That's right. But you know, to come in the name of Jesus, and we're going to get to the mm -hmm. miracle, but to come in the name of Jesus doesn't mean say what you want and then tack on Jesus. Mm -hmm. It means in the old days when they didn't have cell phones and texting and everything, a, from a kingdom a king would send his servant rider, a faithful servant, to go to that other kingdom and speak exactly the words he spoke to him mm -hmm. to another king. Mm -hmm. So what to come in the name of the king means to come before God and to speak what Jesus spoke, yes. his words, and then God will honor it. So I would explain this to people, and one day I'm praying, but I start praying the prayer of Jabez, but the way God meant it, and I heard this voice inside of me say, David, you, you have... I'm saying expand my territory. And he said, you have land that you haven't cleared for planting. You have land that you've cleared. You haven't planted it. You have land that has a crop. You haven't mm -hmm. harvested it. Why don't you worry about the territory you've got? And I'll worry about your new territory. And I was like, who is that? It was literally the Holy Spirit speaking to me, like First a conversation. Time heard the First Holy time, Spirit. I didn't know who the Holy Spirit was wow. as part of obviously God, Jehovah, the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy yes. Spirit. But I didn't have the theology to even understand that at that point. And he's speaking to me. But I thought, what is my territory? Yes. And I realized I was a businessman. I owned two companies. I had 100 employees. My territory is my businesses. I'll offer people a Bible study. Mm -hmm. So I had a pastor come in, uh, a friend of mine, the church I went to was really big. I didn't even know the pastors. So a friend had a pastor come and he came and spoke and every week he would speak. So it was really amazing, the word of God that he spoke. So at one point, my wife who had come to the Bible study, my friend, they said, go see this pastor, because I had had issues from my childhood and the things mm -hmm. that went wrong, and he'll break that off your life. I said, what is it, like an icicle or a barnacle? He's gonna break <laughs> it off my life? Yes. And uh, you know, not realizing that you can be instantly healed, instantly delivered. It doesn't have to be a five-year counseling process. Jesus can do it right now. Amen. The, the miracles he did in the Bible, you know, the Bible says, Hebrews 13, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he was doing then, mm -hmm. he's still doing it right now. Yes. He'll be doing it when we're long gone. Wonderful. Amen. So, so I went to see this pastor and uh, he didn't let me speak. He opens the Bible, shows me the baptism of the Holy Spirit verses, and he says, what do you think? The two prayers I shared with you, I said, I want to know Jesus better and all you have for me. He says, good, stand up, I'm going to pray for you. So I stand up, I hold up my hands. He starts praying words of knowledge about my life that he couldn't have known. Yes. All of a sudden, I feel this power of God go right through me. Like It was like a draft just blew right through me. <sighs> And I'm thinking, what is that? I've never felt this before. And didn't even know you could tangibly experience uh, yes. God Almighty. And um, all of a sudden he says to me, what do you know about healing? And I'm thinking he's changing the subject very fast. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to keep up and he says, what do you know about healing? And I said, 
I know it happened in the Bible. And he says, no, no, it happens today. And I said, no disrespect, Pastor, I'll believe it when I see it. You can see my, my doubt from all sure. the phoniness and things <laughs> I saw. And I was being sincere, I'll believe it if I see it. And he said, you won't see it, you'll do it. Hmm. And I said, why don't I just see it first and then we'll talk about doing it. Hmm. Well, what's amazing is I went home that night and I'm thinking about what happened. I'm thinking this pastor must have tricked me. You know, he had me stand up and too long and it, I went numb because my, my arms were up in the air mm -hmm. or something. But all of a sudden I'm thinking, and I realized my past was healed. Instantly, I couldn't remember half the stories that had happened to me. And the other half, it was like I had the information, but no emotion attached to I it. I love it. It was gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, stories that I used to tell every night about all the bad things that happened to me, from that day till now, all these years later, um, what, 15 years, I've never told a story about my past again. Wow. I was healed. You know, in Matthew 18, uh, it's very important. This is the account of the man who goes to the king. He owes a huge debt yeah. and the, he begs the king. The king's going to throw him in prison and he forgives him. Mm -hmm. But then he goes out and he finds a man who owes him just a little bit and he yes. shakes this man, throws him in prison. Mm -hmm. And when the people heard about this, they tell the king and he calls him back in and says, you wicked servant, I forgave you of so much you won't forgive. Why I share this verse is because a lot of times we're not forgiving ourselves and many times we're not forgiving others. Part of being healed is to first forgive ourselves and forgive others. Yes. We don't forgive them because they've asked for forgiveness or because they deserve it. Mm -hmm. We forgive them because Jesus forgave us. Wow. And so the moment that right there, people say, I can't do that. Just try. You start, you may have to do it one time, 10 times, a thousand times. It may take a week, it may take a year. I but agree. I always say, you know, when we for, forgive, it starts the blessing in your life. Mm -hmm. When we forget what we forgave, it maintains the blessing. I would like you to speak to people that are so much in bond of their past, yeah. that they are not free. Whatever happened, maybe divorce, brutal divorce, uh, abandonment, neglect, abuse, rape, anything, would you please pray same kind of miracle that they will maybe have the collection to say, give a testimony, yes. but they will not have the side effects ever, ever again. So right now, first thing is, Lord Jesus Christ, yes. God, each and every person listening, let them have the grace right now to forgive mm -hmm. themselves, yes. to forgive those who've hurt them. God, it's not that they're being let off the hook. We hand them over to you because you said vengeance is yours, oh God. Lord Jesus Christ, right now, I bind, rebuke, and destroy the work of the enemy. Every demonic spirit, evil devil, holding them right now in their mind, every mind-binding spirit, every spirit of, hang, of anger, hate hatred, bitterness, come out of them right now in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Right now, God, I heal their past. God, all the memory that the devil is using to hold them so they can't move forward in their lives. I release them from the bondage right now. I cut off the chains right now, God, around their wrists, around their neck. God, Isaiah 52, verse one and two, you said, you, the sons and daughters of Jerusalem, rise up, shake off the dust, cut mm. off the bands from around yes. your neck. I cut off the bands right now of hatred, bitterness, anger, resentment. Right mm. now in the name of Jesus Christ, I set them free for the glory of God. I release their minds. I erase the negative memories. God, let them have just a great testimony of what you're doing. Let them be renewed today, restored today, right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Wonderful, wonderful. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you had that experience. Yeah, so mm. that was the first thing that happened. Yes. So then I realized that happened. Then within moments, it was the, like the next day, uh, what happened is at that time I had a compressed disc in my back. I was not able to use this arm. It was completely numb and dead. I was just laying here. Mm -hmm. In fact, my car had a shift and I was having to shift with this hand. I couldn't even move mm. the shift with this arm. Oh. So 30 days it had been like that. And that night... I, I woke up the next morning, it was a Saturday, and uh, I woke up and I was exhausted because every time I would roll on that arm for 30 days, I'm waking up, I'm not sleeping well. Mm -hmm. So as I wake up, I look at six in the morning and I said, a simple prayer, it wasn't even a prayer, it was more of a complaint. <laughs> uh, Jesus, 
You could take this from me if you wanted to. Instantly it was healed. I go running downstairs. I'm banging my arm on the granite countertop. I'm telling my wife, it's gone. She goes, Jesus healed you. I said, stop that simple faith. That's ridiculous. <laughs> and it was healed. So a couple days later, I'm thinking about this professional football player in America. Mm -hmm. His name is Andre Wadsworth. He played for the Arizona Cardinals. I didn't know him personally, but I read about him in the newspaper. He had a big career coming out of Florida State and mm -hmm. went and played for the Arizona Cardinals. Big contract, and he had two career-ending knee injuries, and he couldn't play anymore. Wow. And I had heard about this paper, and I told my wife, I think God wants me to go pray for this man. Mm -hmm. But I said, I'm not going to do that. You know. I've been around some celebrities and professional athletes and people come up to them, strangers, and they have a word from God. Mm -hmm. And they're these weird people who say wacky things. I said, I'm not like that. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm a normal businessman. <laughs> Forget it. I'm not doing it. So that Saturday comes, the next Saturday, and I'm in my gym running on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I collapse and tear all the ligaments in my knee. Wow. I knew 10 years earlier I had, had the, I had torn the ligaments in my other knee and I had to have surgery. So I knew how bad it was. So I was carried to my room, laid on my bed, and I knew come Monday I was going to have to go get surgery. So it was so bad. Even when you tear ligaments, even if you sneeze, you're screaming in pain. Wow. It hurts so bad. So I knew I'd had to get surgery. My wife rubs my leg for two hours that night. I'm in complete pain. Finally, I fall asleep. At two o'clock in the morning, I sit bolt upright. I look at the clock. It's two zero zero. And I said, Jesus, are you trying to show me something? First, my past, then my arm, mm -hmm. then this football player, now my knee. I'm a little thick. Sometimes you got to bang me over the head with yes. a frying pan me for too. me to get it. <laughs> but when I get it, I get it. I said, if you're do you heal? T you know, Jesus, I said, I was literally having a conversation. I said, Jesus, you see me. Your eyes are on me. You know everything that's happened to me. Mm -hmm. So you know all the phoniness and hypocrisy that I've seen from people. So you can understand I'm not being a Pharisee. I'm not judging or saying this or that doesn't happen. I'm just, this is an honest prayer of my heart. Mm -hmm. God, if you heal today, if you can hear me right now and see me, if you can heal, mm -hmm. I need you to heal this knee. You touch it right now. I'll, the, I'll, the devil can never tell me I'm crazy. I'll never listen. People can tell me I'm crazy. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I will know that I know that I know that you are real, you hear me, and you are the healer. Wow. And I said, one more thing, Jesus, I'm not bargaining with you. You know, I have that Jewish background, so we <laughs> like to bargain and negotiate. You know, uh, I'm not bargaining with you, but first of all, if you heal this knee, I'll go find this man, Andre Wadsworth. That means you were speaking to me, and I'll go pray for him. So, I put my hand on my knee and I said, in the name of Jesus, power of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. heal my knee. Right now be healed. It, just like that. Instantly, I jumped off the bed. I'm laying down on the bed. I jump off the bed and I start jumping on that leg up and down like a pogo stick. Wow. Instantly, my wife, I'm screaming. My wife wakes up and I said one of the most profound things I've ever said in my life. I said, I'm devastated. I've touched the hem of the robe of Jesus. My life will never be the same. Hallelujah. You know, before that night, I never shared my faith with one person ever. After that, both individually and corporately, I've shared with a couple million people around the world. I, when, when I was healed, I was, I was dialing people in my cell phone. Jesus, he's real. He's the healer. Wow. People are like, are, are, aren't you a Christian? I said, no, no, no. Let me tell you, it's real. Wow. And I experienced Jesus. I knew how bad that was. There was nothing uh, other mm -hmm. than a surgery that was going to change that, and I was healed. So just ending the story, because that wasn't even the end of it. The next day I wake up, I tell my wife, I'm going to honor what God said, what I promised. I said, because I had said one other thing. I said, I said, Jesus, I'll go find Andre Wadsworth and I'll pray for him. Wow. So I had never met him. But I knew someone who knew of him and where he went to church. So I went to that place for the first time that morning. He's outside handing out bulletins to people. And I walked up to him. And I said, Andre, my name is David Turner. I am, uh, I am uh, uh, not a fanatic. I'm not a crazy man. I'm a businessman. 
I need to pray for you. I need to talk to you after church. So I go and meet with him afterwards. He meets with me. I share my whole story and I tell him, I say, no disrespect, but who are you to me? But I can't stop thinking about you. I think God wants to heal you. I pray for his knees. It's a little bit of a story, but it was so amazing. Um, God showed me uh, prophetically that he would run on a treadmill and play in the NFL again. At that time, he had had 13 surgeries and been on crutches for three years. Wow. No doctor in America could help him. So it looked like impossible, impossible. right? Impossible. Yes. I pray for him. The very next day, he winds up running on a treadmill without a harness that would hold half his weight off. He squats 600 pounds. That fall, he plays football for the New York Jets again. That was the start. From there, I started praying for people, and everywhere I would go, um, God would do miracles. I would touch people. Their migraines would disappear. Mm -hmm. Cancers disappear. I saw blind eyes open, deaf ears open, people getting out of wheelchairs. I was more frightened yes. than I was excited. <laughs> and the devil tried to tell me, oh, you just want to think there's more to this life than you think you want to think you're important. But I remembered I had promised Jesus, you heal this. I won't let the devil tell me that. And, you know, mm -hmm. everywhere I would go, there would be miracles. In fact, I have to tell you this fun story that what happened is every time I'd start going to meetings and I was so scared because I was just telling people Jesus healed and I didn't want to be embarrassed and have nothing happen. <laughs> that's and, right. and that's where I started with the Lord. But then I saw all these miracles and I was intoxicated with his power. But then Jesus said, I heal my children because I love them. Wow. And I understood all the healing comes through the love of Jesus. So yes. all the gifts do, but especially healing happens. We don't beg for the gift. We grow in the love when the fruit of the spirit and the love materializes in our life automatically the miracles and the gifts start to materialize. And people get healed. They get healed, they get touched, prophetic words come. It can't be, I'm gonna sh see someone healed so they can see I'm a powerful evangelist. Mm -hmm. It can't be because I want money. It's only the love of Jesus. Absolutely. So what was amazing was one day I was in a hotel room I'm going to these meetings. I'm scared to death to be in front of people, never spoken in front mm -hmm. of people in my life. And, uh, and I would pray at every meeting, Jesus, if you don't show up, it's a rain out because I can't do anything for these people. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm an athlete, even on a bad night, you can score a few points or shoot a basket. <laughs> but with Jesus, I can't heal anyone. So, so I would pray that. And one time the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, David, when you go to the meeting, do you ask your nose or your arm to come with you? And I said, no, Lord. He said, from now on, you never have to ask me wherever you are. I am with you. And I thought wow. about it and I realized every time from the first day I prayed for people until today, I've never had a meeting without a miracle. Sometimes there's thousands in a big meeting and sometimes there's 10, 20, 100 miracles, but I've never seen a meeting without Jesus showing up and Hallelujah. doing a miracle. And I want to thank you, David, for just being with us today and sharing this amazing faith boosting stories with us because Amen. I know that it has a great impact in the world right now. Amen. Thank you so much for being with me today. So happy to be here. The Lord Jesus Christ healed me. No if and buts about it. I've, had, uh, I've got COPD, I've had it for 14 years. I've been on uh, two liters of oxygen for uh, two years. Today was a struggling day. I, um, I really had this afternoon a lot of trouble breathing. And uh, when I got here, it all changed. Fire of God! He's letting you go! He's letting you go! Devil! Devil! Let him go! Let him go! Let him go! I could fire see a, and, and felt a, like a, a fire. I, it's like... Um, something really red, really hot that entered me, and then it started choking me. And then I just uh, started c uh, coughing. And then my lungs just kept getting, just like you were expanding them, you know, just getting full of air and getting more full of air. And, and it just, it was just lifting me up. And, and, and finally, uh, I just started relaxing and, uh, and started breathing normally. You'll be rid of this by tomorrow morning. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands and give glory to God. God bless you. And by faith, uh, the Lord uh, healed me. Come on! Come on! Jesus! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! This 
program is made possible by friends and partners of Ishik Abla Ministries. If you'd like to support our ministry, please go to our website at www.ishikabla.com. There you can make a secure tax-deductible donation. Our vision is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ with a message of salvation, freedom, and healing for the transformation of the Muslim world and bring revival to the body of Christ. We thank you for your support.